welcome back. So now that I've repaired this TV, I thought I'd go back and examine the uh, computing side of it. As this TV is based on open source code such as Broadcom's um, common firmware environment set-top box Linux, typically with these things there's a debug output when it starts up. In this case it's uh, at a much faster 115,200 bits per second. So rather than having to keep switching backwards and forwards between the, the serial port speeds, what I've done is set it up so that both aspects of this now run at a 115,200 bits per second. That's the debug startup um, output and the console. Uh, I'm not going to go into uh, downloading the source code right now. So, uh, however, I have spent a good bit, uh, good bit of time looking at it, and uh, interestingly, LG seem to have leaked some of their, sorry, um, supplied some of their proprietary code with the sources archive, uh, which we'll see much later. Um, but what I thought I'd do right now is go back and uh, talk about the simpler serial stuff first. Um, so here we've got the external device. This is the, the user's manual for the, the for the TV. Uh, as you can see, this RS232 setup would be familiar to those that have been to the, the OpenLG TV website. And this looks like um, just a straight screen capture and being put on the site. So the board rates, it's the default board rate. I've actually changed that on this machine to 115,200 bits per second. Um, I'll show you how to do that later, but what we're interested in here are, are the, the power commands. So it's broken up into two, two uh, three components at least. Uh, so you've got a command 1, a command 2, and then you've got some data. Um, going into more detail, this is the transmission protocol. And here they show you the command format when you... This is what you actually type in. Okay, so this is this is an example of what would happen after an acknowledgement, and this is an example of what would happen if you had an error. Um, and this is now we're getting into specific commands. So this is for, for the power command. This is what we'd expect to send, and this is what we would expect to receive. Um, now, the breakup of this uh, protocol, they unfortunately use these square brackets. Uh, people familiar with uh, command lines would probably, like I did, assume that things in square brackets are optional. That is that is not the case here. Um, the, the square brackets are basically just uh, delimiters for the components of this protocol. So, the, the command to type in would be KA space, yep, space, um, an ID, um, they tell you the ID can is is one to zero. But I typically will use zero, so uh, and uh, as we will see the response back will give us a clue of what ID we can continue to use. Uh, as for whether every connected set responds when you use zero, I don't know. Uh, so let's uh, let's actually show it. So we have a usual setup. We've got the the mirror down there, um, and you can see the LED light. And there's my serial cable. And we want to go into uh, Terra Term. And want to bang in KA space. Oh, that's the thing. You, it, there's no echo. Uh, zero space one. Enter. Okay. So. Uh, the only results you see is, is when it either accepts or rejects the commands. So the response was, uh, we typed in, uh, the, the acknowledgement is not the K, just the A, so command 2 space ID space either OK or NG, 
the data and then the closing, a terminating X. So that's what we've got. Um, interestingly enough, it, the set that's responded is um, 1. So what we can do now is turn it off. So it's uh, KA, we'll use 1 this time, um, and then 0, and the power get goes off. Now, the other thing that we can do is that we can actually... Um, 22, we can actually send a key, and the key, as we'll see described shortly, um, the key code that you need to use is actually described on page 150, which is one page before where we started. So what I want to do is, is I want to use the power button. So that's effectively... Um, through that interface, so let's see whether that works. So that's um, 22, wasn't it? So to go to 4, 17, 18, 20, 22. All right, so send IR code, so it's MC space ID data. Right, so in this case, it's going to be. Um, MC space 1 space 8 enter and it, we've turned on and uh, because it's a toggle let's try it again MC space 1 space 8 enter and it's off so there's, there's two examples of um, uh, using that serial interface Okay, so um, I'll um, start to show you some more of the, the serial interface commits. But uh, before going that way, I thought I'd just get some bearings on what this particular TV is. So um, those of you that are familiar probably realise that um, LG is now using this WebOS, and this TV is a, is the old netcast. So they talked about. Um, you had your, your netcast releases from uh, 2000, which were netcast 2, and uh, the current version at uh, 2015 is netcast 4.5. So going into the detail, um, you can see that 2011 is a is a, a MIPS dual core system with uh, 512 megs of RAM and a minimum of a, a 1280 by 720 uh, screen. Now, what I've done is I've actually gone into this particular page and I've reset my default board rate to 115,200 uh, using, using this. Uh, so what you're going to see when I bootstrap the thing is it's going to be much faster than what yours will be by default at 9600 board. Uh, so make sure I've got the terminal selected and I'm going to hit the F9 key about every second or so as I turn the TV on. So power on, F9, 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 there we go. Okay, so we get a, 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 an early bootstrap and it seems to turn the messaging off at this particular point here. So. Um, I'm not sure whether uh, my tinkering with the, the, the messaging, the diagnostic messaging has, because I don't recall seeing this before at the, the early press of the F9, so that's something that's probably worth investigating. Now, the way that this works is this is, this is basically a timestamp here. So the, this, the, the, this information here, this is the whole, whole part of the second and this is the fractional part of the second. And this is either you know the module or the you know, the the process, the task name um, that's producing the the message, and this is obviously the message. So there's some interesting information in there, um, but where we are now is I need to um, turn on the messaging. So we enable that. That was pressing F9 yet again, and at this point we can um, uh, we can uh, 
press F1 and see that we have a console um, uh, for various things. So you can you know, show this help message, which is the pressing the F1, which is what I just did, and they can reset these debug menu levels. Um, um, so the, de the, the debug level is currently zero, so resetting is not going to do anything. Um, toggle the overrun check, and then you've got these reservations for future uh, and the, your task resource tables. I'm not sure what this OSA task stuff is. Did a search on the dev website, couldn't find anything useful. Um, F9 is toggling the debug message output, and F10 is where we're going to go. The other thing is it has this a top utility and a, a task monitoring tool. Um, because I'm running at 115,200 bits a second, um, this task monitoring, pressing F11, um, works reasonably well. Uh, it's just like top in Linux, for those who are familiar, so you can just press Q to quit out of it. At 9600 board, this is very hard to get out of, at least when I was first tinkering it at such a slow rate. Uh, it was very hard because it was drawing real slow and it was typically it was falling behind uh, in terms of screen refreshes and so it was um, uh, not, not uh, very intuitive as to what was happening. F12, unknown command, okay, quit first and then F12. Uh, so that's, that, so those are your, your task stuff. I can't see anything about OSA in there. Uh, typical. I've got the font size too large. Alright, that's... That was cute to get out of that. F1 brings up that. And where are we going to normally go? It's into F10. So... I did, a, did some looking at the sources um, for... Uh, for this, and uh, for those of you that are that are interested, um, the the sources here are, are out of date, um, but uh, with what's actually installed in terms of the firmware on this machine. But the routine you want to look at is is debug main. It's a huge routine. Um, Five hundred twenty-seven to nine thirty-five line. So do your math, how many lines that is. Uh, I'll, I'll bore uh, you with a number, that, but there is something interesting here, is this, uh, there's these things with, with, with a, a bang or an exclamation mark. So these, uh, it's got history, uh, 10 levels of history, theoretically. Uh, yeah, so you've got a menu depth of 64, the command line length of 256 characters. So yeah, if you want to have a look at that, that that's under uh, there, under uh, set top box Linux 2.8, Arch, MIPS, Kernel, Command, uh, CMD, Debug C. Um, yeah, so that's actually this is a an LG uh, supplied file, and they've mixed it in with the set top block set top box Linux. So um, if you get set top box Linux, you won't find that in that distribution. But the short end of all of that is there is some built-in functionality. Now the thing has history, so if I can bang in, I can either type in history, history, uh, and I've currently got no history, so I can type in ver, and I can type in up, was it up time? I think it was, yes, and that confirms if I just hit the volume control, you can see that 314 seconds of uptime, and and these messages, you can see, so. That's enough confirmation mix for that. Th those are timestamps. Those bits are the messages there. Um, and our history will now have those two commands. Now, what you can do is you can uh, access that history through the bank. So that's entry number two. So if I want to run uptime again, I just do bank two and hit enter, and it just runs uptime again. And it has this extra functionality, which I don't know how useful it is, but I'll leave that for you to decide. You can hit bang two, and then you can type in in a space, and then type in a number of milliseconds. So, uh, and it supports things like K, M, and G. So I can type in one K, and that uh, those um, are um, uh, the binary um, 
units. So that'll be 1024 milliseconds. So like I says, hit escape. I uh, don't know how useful it is, but there it is. The other thing it has is, is that the menuing system, you can actually get the number of levels uh, of depth in the menuing system. Um, and you can uh, just use a forward slash to, to take you right back to the root. So it's saved you having to exit your way all the way out of uh, sub-menus and to run something from the root. Uh, so um, one thing that's interesting here is this, is this test. And uh, this is interesting because it allows you to um, to see or verify that the thing actually has symbols. And so crash is an interesting item there. And uh, those are the choices that you have. And if uh, of these choices, the, the only one which doesn't actually restart the, um, the TV is, is the trace. If I do a crash trace, you can see that it loads symbols from, um, so checking and importing debug symbols and that's the the storage location on on the machine's firmware so yeah and, and you can see call stacks as well um, along with the source and the line numbers and that's how I know that this command debug is um, uh, is the thing that's actually implementing the shell and that uh, the sources I have are not even close to um, what's actually running at all in terms of the firmware on the machine so um, you can see debug test crash uh, runs at that line and this main menu is at 783 well you know if I go to that that go to 708 line at 783 that is not going to be the point where it executes 7 go oh, 7 8 can't type 83 Right, uh, we're on an empty line here. So, so uh, this 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 is actually traversing menuing at this point, traversing the menu system. It's not actually executing commands. I think the commands don't get executed until much further on. So yeah, they, that's an easy way to tell that the sources don't match. Um, I might show the the serial interface how I changed that. So I, the, the the place where I need to go was the 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 organ. Um, so most of this information's um, we're well beyond that, uh, and it's not pertinent, not relevant to this particular version of firmware for this TV. But we're about we're about here. So, and I'm in a sub menu. So I'm going to preface the command with a forward slash and then type in organ. Ooh, helps if you type. G org. Mm -hmm. Okay, and item 51 is the one we want. So 51. And we want to go into end start and then the the board rate test. So um, I suppose it was originally designed to be a board rate test, but the the side effect is 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 that it actually remembers the board rate from between reboots and actual power off. I mean, physically um, removing the power from from the wall, letting the thing sit there for an hour or two. Uh, so we we want to change it to 115 200, which is not six, is seven. So the second from the end. So we bang in seven. And now we see nothing, so we have to go in and go into our serial port, change her up to 115-200, hit enter, and we're now running at 115-200. And if we reset, F9, she's a much faster. Now, um, I had hopes that um, uh, 
these commands would actually access symbols. Uh, they don't. The only item on here that seems to access symbols is this guy. Uh, when I say symbols, I mean I'm talking about debug symbols. Uh, in fact, I can show you that it supports debug symbols by crashing it. So if I do, uh, if I do a, a memory dump of um, well, let's do it just a memory memory dump. You can see that it works. And uh, uh, the st source code for that was where's my there it is. Oops, come back here. So that's the that's the routine which uh, uh, gets the the symbols by name. Um, and uh, this is part of the the menuing subsystem. And as you can see, it's not complete because not all of those commands are there. But in in this MD, it calls this debug memory guy. Um, sort this alphabetically. So debug memory dump. And you can see in here, it just uh, checks your arcs and then just string to long your two. That's also a long a function on here, but essentially it does call uh, string to long in here. It uh, you can choose different bases, so it starts off with a, a, a binary base. Sorry, it starts off with a, um, a, z a base of zero. Um, And you can switch the binary by using the B prefix, and then it does a simple st uh, stir to long. And then, the, if it has a a, a a suffix, these are the suffixes that are recognised, and it just does straight bit shifting. I'm not sure why R is 13 bits. I don't even know what R is, uh, but K uh, uh, ten ten to the uh, two to the power of ten is a thousand twenty four. You know, and, um, two to the power of twenty is this, uh, a million basically in a gig, and they're doing it by thirty. So you can see it supports uh, K M N G gig um, in that particular routine. If we go back. Long, and it just takes an address. So if if so if it's not a valid address, if it's not a valid address, um, well, I think is valid address crashes. <laughs> so <laughs> whether it's meant to do that or not, I think it's is valid address that crashes. So let's have a look. So if I do an MD and just type in any old thing. Um, test she crashes and you can see it goes through the call stack so it well so it behaves differently here so we got we get 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 address and find symbol by name. So it is actually doing a find symbol by name. I might have to look at that later. <laughs>